Hello and welcome to another episode of Sonic Touch, the show that's dedicated to making music on touch devices. We used to do this, but uh, we've been told it looks a bit creepy, so we won't. Anyway, I'm Nick Bat, editor of sonicstate.com. And I'm Gaz Williams, a musician and a producer. So it's been a little while since our last episode. It feels like yeah. the sort of thing you say at an AA meeting, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. But, but um, there's been a lot of stuff happening. Primarily, yeah. uh, what's the big news? Well, big news, I guess the biggest news is the latest generation of the iPad being released, called the iPad Air. Yeah. Also the new iPad Mini, more about that in a moment. But also iOS 7 as well. iOS 7 is quite mm. a big one. Um, you actually went out and bought an iPad Air, right? I did. I was feeling a little bit now, a little bit kind well, of you, you had behind the, iPad the times. Too, didn't you? I did, yeah. And I think there's been such a, a significant increase of CPU power. I thought it was the time to do it now. But We could have a look at the CPU power, couldn't we? You've got some graphics. Let's go to the... Yeah, let's go and have a look here because this is quite interesting. Now, I said about the iPad mini, and when we look at these graphics, we'll see now why the iPad mini is quite interesting. The new iPad mini retina, as they're calling it. Now, look at the iPad Air. Right up there, top of the tree, as you'd expect. And the iPad 2 down there at the bottom, that is just looking yep. like a very sad and uh, a sort of machine that you would never find a girlfriend. Having but look at those. this. In <laughs> yeah, interestingly, and if we come and look at the iPad 2, which my, my previous one was at 261. Now from 261 to 1467 yeah, is that's such a, a of six. Or something, yeah. isn't it? It's interesting there that the iPad mini is actually almost the same in yeah. terms of CPU mm -hmm. as the, uh, the full iPad Air, right? That's right. So now, because when the iPad mini came out last year at the same time as the, the fourth generation iPad, if we look back at the, the, statist at the statistics here, we can see that the iPad, when the iPad fourth generation came out, uh, the iPad 4 was 1409 compared to the iPad mini at 493, wow. which was the same as the iPad 2. That's a thousand better. -er. Yeah. But now the difference is relatively marginal. Mm. So that means that the iPad mini is now a contender, you know. Well, let's first of all, um, we should take a look because I've got the iPad 4 here because I bought one of these uh, at precisely the wrong time to buy one <laughs> uh, just before they announced. So this is it. And we're going to compare just quick com comparison. Yeah. Uh, in most instances, mine would mine being bigger would be a good thing. but It's not in this. <laughs> so uh, let's just hold them up together. And yep. you can see mm. there's there's a kind of a different size. It's they've quite, narrowed the, the the screen is exactly the same size. But they've narrowed the, the, the outer edge here. Yeah, it's thinner as well. It's not significant. It feels like a few mils thinner, I would say. Yeah, not... and weight-wise, there's, you know, there's quite a difference. There's quite there? a difference. This change in size is going to cause mayhem. mayhem. Nothing fits, does Nothing it? Nothing fits. So again, Apple have just gone ahead and just wiped away everything. Yep. Yeah. So all your cases and... Dedicated. Well, about the only thing that's the same is the lightning connector, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what's that? Is that stereo speakers as Stereo well? speakers now. So, you know, so if you get your head roughly <laughs> there... You get the really you nice enjoy wide the st stereo sound. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I have noticed that the stereo effect, it does... Providing you are They've in, probably got some clever psychoacoustic stuff going on there. Yeah, you can hear a little bit more dimension to it, but it's not. A, it, that wouldn't be something that would attract me as no. a as a selling point. So the big thing with all this extra power is obviously, you know, from a music making point of view, it offers an enormous increase in performance, right? Right. Well, you'd like to think so. So far, it's a little bit difficult to measure this because iOS yeah. seven. We yeah. should mention. Yes, of course. Seems to be a little bit, bit of a hog, frankly. Mm, a bit buggy as well with audio apps. So it's hard to kind of gauge just what uh, an increase it is because you can only get these with iOS yeah, seven. You can't go down. And that's the thing. I just upgraded to uh, iOS seven on uh, the iPad four. And I noticed a few times that it seemed like I wasn't getting as much performance as I'd remembered out of some synths, whereas previously it was actually, you know, plenty of headroom, no problem at all. Hmm. So whether this is actually, there'll be optimization throughout the course of iOS 7 will remain to be seen. But as of, as of yet, we've seen some quite disturbing comparisons. People are saying they're running their projects that were running on iOS 6, they try and run it on iOS 7 and it's stuttering and splattering and... Mm. So, 
We'll have to so see So the about jury's that. out a little bit. Mm. Up to now, all this uh, fabulous instruments and synthesizers and processing has been really amazing. But there's been one really big problem, and that is integrating it with your in existing system. You've had to kind of basically plug it in, record it via another audio interface. It's been a mess, frankly. But that's all about to change, right, Gaz? Absolutely. With a fantastic new device that's come out on the market. This is a product released by iConnectivity, and it's called the iConnect MIDI 2. There is the iConnect MIDI 4, which is about to come out. It's not out yet, which gives extra functionality, which we'll explain in a moment. But let's have a little look what this actually does. So this is the unit here, right? Yes. It's, oh, it's nice and chunky, isn't it? Is, it is, isn't it? It's got a nice build quality. It's essentially a MIDI interface. Wow, big deal, you might think. But it does actually contain a very, very special function, which is... Audio pass-through. Audio pass-through. Audio pass-through. And this is a really big deal because what this means, it allows us to take the audio from the iPad into your host computer via one of these USB slots on the front and allows you effectively to stream that in via an aggregate device. We'll explain how that goes. Yeah. Um, let's just talk a little bit more. Basically, we get yep. four MIDI ports, right? Yep. Two USB and, yep. two, and, two physical, and two physical MIDIs. Yes. Uh, there's... Uh, Power supply. Now, the power supply is interesting in that it doesn't need a power supply to work, uh, so it'll work as bus power when you connect it to your computer. But if you've got your iPad connected to it, using a power port will keep the nice. iPad charged. That's just Fab. an intelligent piece of design, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, so that's an optional thing if you're... Because you don't need to use this with an iPad. You can just use it as an audio interface. In fact, you can, con you can control... You can link two computers together through it as well. It's got two USB ports on yeah. the front, right? So the audio pass-through could work if you had like two computers and you wanted to integrate the audio from one in as well. So, oh, I see. So it's a well, one, one on the iConnect 2, we've got one of them is the one that's the sort of audio yes. sender. Yes, yes. And then the other one is just the direct computer. Right? Yeah, which will just do MIDI. Uh, so I mentioned earlier about the iConnect 4, which, is, uh, which isn't out yet. That gives you another iPad input as so well. So you could hook up to three. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Also, it gives you a USB hub as well, so you could actually plug your USB keyboards right. directly into it. It's, it's a very chunkly and nicely built thing, I Lovely. must say. It feels yeah. very solid. So we talked about audio pass-through, but we need to really demonstrate what that actually is, because you might notice that there's no audio connect no. connections on there at all. So we need to set up an aggregate device, right? So I'll plug the iPad in first. This is on the left-hand port. And that comes, it comes with a 30-pin cable connector. Um, obviously, you need an adapter to get into the later iPads, a lightning mm -hmm. connector. And that's an additional expense, right? That's right, yes. Yeah. So, but I do believe that they will ship with lightning in the future, but not now. So you will, that is additional expense that okay. you are going to incur. All right. And then the next thing to plug in, this is the going to the host computer, which is the MacBook Pro. And if I plug mm -hmm. this, as I plug this in, if you go to the screen, you'll see it show up. There we go. I connect MIDI 2. Yeah, with two in, two out. And if we look here, we can see that it is only 44.1. 24-bit, right. OK. OK, so we're going to make an aggregate device on the Mac here. Now, if you're using a Windows machine, it will automatically aggregate to your uh, audio interface, providing you use a, 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 the ASIO for all driver. It'll just come up as extra an extra pair of inputs and outputs, probably at the end of your existing ones. OK, but on the Mac, what we do is we open up the audio MIDI setup, and we click the little plus symbol here, create aggregate device. OK, so now we're creating an aggregate device, I'm going to select, in this case, we're using the optical out of the Mac. So that's the built-in output. And also now I'm going to add the iConnect MIDI. OK, so the clock source we're clocking, we're going to use the, the Mac's built-in to clock with. OK, so now we've built that aggregate device. That aggregate device will show up as an audio interface in your DAW. And in this case, we're going to open up Ableton Live. And so we're going to use this aggregate as our audio interface. So let's do that now. So open up the preferences in live, audio, audio input device, aggregate device, audio output device, aggregate device. Worth saying you can name it. So you could make, make it something, you know, a bit more descriptive than aggregate device. <laughs> yeah. Just for the case of brevity, we didn't. So yeah. just so you know. But I have created a couple of tracks here. I've already named them. So I've created an audio track called iPad Audio, and I've created a MIDI track called iPad MIDI. But currently, it's not rooted at the moment. So the iPad Audio is going to receive audio from the aggregate 
device. So we're going to choose on here, we're going to say configure, input configuration, and we can see we've got our stereo input, which is coming from the iPad. Is that external in, is the, is the external audio, is it? Uh, it's treating it as though they are external inputs, external inputs right, okay, yeah. Got you. The MIDI in, we're going to now set up, we're going to have to configure something, but we'll do that in a moment. So I'm just going to set that to monitor, and the MIDI output I'm going to select to the iConnect MIDI. Now I've only enabled in the MIDI settings here, just the first of the iConnect MIDI the four, this right, four. Right, additional ports. So yeah. we're only using one in this simple setup in to demonstrate. In this simple setup, yeah. Okay, so we're going to take the input from the launch key, right? That's right, yeah. So, so we know to play it. from there. Yeah, the, now the launch key, we should explain, is connecting to the computer via USB. That's right. Yeah, so we're going to say... Review coming soon, there's an ovation <laughs> launch key. So Mi we select there, launch yep. key MIDI. Right, so now if I press MIDI, you can see that there's MIDI coming into the uh, Ableton Live. Yep. The, there we go. So now we're going to route that MIDI in the iPad. So okay. coming to the iPad, there's a little free app that you can get called iConfig, which is specifically for this. So it's seen the iConnect MIDI 2. There it is. So as we mentioned, that there's four different ports for both sets of right. USB. So if we go to port routing. So we see here, the brown ones, USB 1 up to 1 1.4, mm -hmm. are the iPad ports, mm -hmm. effectively the left-hand side of the USB connect on the iConnectivity, connectivity, mm -hmm. and 2.1 to 2.4 mm -hmm. are the Mac ports. Yeah. So we've got eight, eight ports, and eight USB ports. Each one of these is obviously your 16 channels yeah. per port. So now I'm going to select 2.1. So this is, and now I'm going. Where do I want to route it to? I'm going to route it to the USB 1.1 here. So that's from. Then port one of the MacBook to port one of the iPad. Exactly. Got that. It's a little bit complex, but yeah. once you get your head around it, it's pretty yeah. straightforward. Actually, the app is quite is quite yeah, it's pretty easy quite to easy use, to use. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to open a synth now on here. I'm going to open Waldorf Nave, which Great synthesizer. is a terrific synthesizer. Yes. And now if we go on here and we come and look at in our tape system devices, and we see device, we can see that it's seeing all the... All the available MIDI available ports MIDI from the iConnect. That's fantastic. So now, theoretically, if I play, play the keyboard... Wow, so what's actually happening there? And this is a really big deal. This may seem like, whoa, so they connect to some MIDI. What's happening here? The MIDI is going into the computer, out of the computer, into the iConnect MIDI, triggering the sound inside the iPad in mm -hmm. Nave, which is coming back digitally audio into uh, live. And now if we recorded that, so if we go here. We did just, uh, yeah, just arm that track. Arm this track, mm -hmm. and we're just gonna go record, and I start playing. And now, oops, that's, it? that's the audio has been recorded yeah. into. So take the auto there. Yeah. And that, it, you know, this again, you know, you, you can't overestimate how big a deal that is in terms of what just happened there. Yeah. Because that really is kind of a fairly major. So, so. Yeah. I mean, it's our iPad here is essentially a VST. Which instrument. is what we've been kind of hoping for for ages. <laughs> yeah. And now I have, I mean, Gaz has been the one who's been looking at the iConnect MIDI. Are there any gotchas? Are there any things that we, you know, we've obviously run through this a few times, you know, what yeah. was it? We well, had a buffer issue, didn't peculiarly, we? Peculiarly, if I was to change, I've got the, the, the buffer set to 220 here, and I've noticed this. If I was to go to like 512, for instance, Ooh. nasty business. So I'm not quite sure why. Let's try 331. So it seems like, strangely, the, the lower, lower the buffer, better it performs, which is great for us because yeah. there's no yeah. latency. What, and speaking of latency, does it feel fairly responsive? It's not bad. Yeah, it feels great actually. Getting lost in music there, guys. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, as I said, you know, this is like the wow, the eureka moment, really. 
that uh, that we have been waiting for because yes. for so like I said before, in the intro to this piece for so mm -hmm. long we've been waiting for a way to yeah. get the audio out of the iPad into your DAW. Yes. And if you think about this, you know, if you had an iConnect MIDI 4 mm -hmm. where you had say maybe two, you could have two iPads going on mm -hmm. and it would be you'd have double double the instruments. And also, mm. not, let's not forget, you could have multiple instances of instruments running yes. at the same time yeah. and record those. There's only one audio bus though, isn't there? So you can't you can't actually sort of route separate streams of audio. That's right, into... it's just a stereo. It would just see it as a stereo. I suppose you could pan audio. left and right, couldn't you? Yeah, you could do that. But I mean, I suppose maybe one other way of approaching it would be that you would just record the audio in as and when you needed it. And then you can always go back and uh, to retweet, yeah, because so, you, you can record either you could record the MIDI or yes. you could record the audio. I mean, obviously, yeah. the thing about this, the difference is, if you're using it like a VST, when if you're using a VST, when you save your document, everything, all the settings are saved altogether. In this, you've got another device that you can't. It's like back to the old days of having your Mac rack MIDI gear, where you've got to go out <laughs> and make sure you store your program and yes. recall it, and then you know. Yeah. So, it it. it in some ways, it's mm -hmm. incredibly advanced, and in other ways, it isn't. Yes, and the, the thing that this really does throw out for me, though, is mm -hmm. why do we have to... I mean, this, it's great that iConnectivity have made this, but why do we have to have this kind of complex box? Why can't we just come USB out of the iPad, which is an Apple product, yes. into another computer, which is an Apple product, and have all this happening like, like it is? It just seems... Why? Just... Yeah. My God, what yes. are you doing? Exactly, yeah. So, uh, but I mean... But then I guess when you look at the iConnect MIDI, you know, it is... It's doing a lot of other things. It's doing a lot of other things. And of course, because it's got those physical outputs as well, we should mention that the power oh. supply, yeah. Is, oh, it doesn't come with it. It doesn't come with it. So that is an optional extra. And again, as I mentioned, the power supply is only there if you want to kind of keep your iPad powered up. I mean, the, to but, me, this seems like the thing Everybody should have if they have an, if they need an audio if they need a MIDI interface because if you've got yes. an iPad or any kind of iOS device, yes. hello, yeah. it's just a no-brainer, isn't it? I mean, this is mm -hmm. a ground. I, I mean, it's a groundbreaking product. I mean, mm -hmm. I think this is worthy of mm -hmm. a gold award from us, mm -hmm. uh, and we don't give those lightly, folks. No, no, no we don't. And uh, the build quality is fantastic. The the lights, the indicators on the front is you know it's great. You can see what's going on at all times. The app itself is so simple to use. But, you know, with all of those available MIDI ports, you could really integrate a very complex MIDI setup. Is there an iOS lower ceiling? I mean, it works in 7, which we've got here. It works presumably in lower. What's the, what's the sort of minimum iOS it needs to run? Uh, the device itself, because it's class compliant, will work on any level. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the app itself, I'm not sure about. Uh, whether the app runs. I think it does. I think it is. It's just a MIDI on, router, right? It's just a MIDI router. So, you know, it is a, you know, so you could actually configure it from the computer anyway. So it's, uh, but the device is, it just sees it. It's class compliant. So uh, we should say um, the price, I guess, and availability. It's available now. We got one for review, so you can get them. How yes. much is it? And the price, unbelievably, £69.99. dollars bucks. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I have to say that really, I, I was expecting yeah. you to say 140 quid, you know, something like that. And that yeah, is, yeah. considering the the, the, the kind of mm -hmm. groundbreakingness, that's well, not really a word, of the product, I think that's amazing. It finally allows your iPad to be essentially... Part of the gang. Part of the gang, you know, a professional integration within your studio. I mean, only downside is obviously 44 one. You yeah, know, if you've got if you run your sessions at other ones, then you're going to have to. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that could be a problem. I think that's largely though to do with as well. Most iPad apps don't yeah. run at higher sample rates. Some do, but most will be sort of 41 anyway, 44.1. Uh, but you know, yeah. What can we say? I mean, I think you should buy one really if you have an iPad. I mean, it's that simple. I'm going to get one definitely. Yeah. I, I, I'm holding out for the i for the iConnect MIDI 4. Ah uh, yes of course that which, has a little bit more. Well yes as we mentioned earlier that has got that extra so you could have two iPads right off it. but it also works as a host doesn't it? Which is amazing. And what USB that means host. is a USB host means that you can plug your USB controllers into it mm -hmm. and they will work without you having to have a computer involved. So it's mm -hmm. essentially like a kind of little micro computer that allows you to Plug. Yes, and then 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 that MIDI can be rooted out to the uh, hardware. So hopefully, we'll have one soon in for a review. We'll uh, we'll show that, I guess. 
Because well, uh, on that very high note, as yes. we said, iConnect MIDI 2 definitely gets a gold award from us. I um, want to say thank you to those for sending us one. So I know they're very hard to come by still. Uh, there's still a lead time in certain instances that iConnect 4 might be along soon. But uh, that's Sonic Touch episode 26. Thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah. And as always, please leave your comments underneath. We uh, really appreciate any feedback. Any Absolutely. Advice. So just below here, good or bad, even if you can hack the new YouTube's commenting system, which I'm personally finding most irritating, <laughs> just put them in there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks. See ya. Bye.